Diane, please forgive me. I, I'd never want to get in your way. I'm sorry, honey. Thank you for understanding, Coach. You know, when you live alone, uh, you, you tend to forget that other people have lives. Are you feeling what I'm feeling? Yeah. Uh, poor Coach. Well, we have so many hours together, I guess it's kind of selfish not to spend a little time with him, huh? You're right. I'll go get him. Good. I bet you can catch him on the steps. <laughs> Coach, why are you standing there? With my coat got caught in the door, Sam. <laughs> I didn't have the heart to bother you again. Good night, Diane. <laughs> Oh, uh, Diane, uh, how, how did you and uh, Catherine come to me? Oh, I had the long death. I had Well, that's all right, honey. Sometimes I forget things, too. Or do I? <laughs> oh, you tickle me. Are you always this funny? Uh, I doubt it. <laughs> I'm Marie's teacher. She said she's going to have to hold her back. Oh, that's too bad, Carla. Oh, don't worry about it, Carla. It's just as bad to skip a grade. You skipped a grade, Coach? I skipped four. High school, I think they called it. <laughs> hey, uh, Coach, some of them the beer, please. Where, where's Normie, Carla? I got a great story to tell him. Ain't my job to keep tabs on the walking beer keg. Besides, who cares about your stupid story? Yeah, thank you, Carla. <laughs> Coach, if you serve that beer any slower, it's going to be vinegar before I quaff it. Oh, didn't I tell you, Cliff? I'm on the verge of setting a new monthly record for fewest glasses broken. That's great, Coach. How uh, close are you? Oh, I just have to make it to midnight uh, without breaking seven glasses. Oh. oh, holy coyote, Coach. There must be at least four inches of feathers down there. Six inches, Cliff. Oh, you can't be too careful when you're going for a record. All right, Coach, never thought I'd see the day you'd be working with a net. Well, you never will. <laughs> Hi, honey. Oh, Coach. Yeah, honey. Sam says his Uncle Nathan up in Vermont just died. That'd be sure did. Do you believe that? Well, of course, Diane. I mean, they wouldn't make funeral arrangements if the man wasn't dead. <laughs> I think they got a test for that. Hey, Coach, come on. Why don't you tell Diane the truth? There is no Uncle Nathan. Well, right. Sam's accepted it, so we all have to. <laughs> so, you feel okay now? Huh? I was never not okay. You were? Well, great, great. Boy, what a silly misunderstanding this was, huh? <laughs> Sam. Well. There was never a misunderstanding. I knew the truth the whole time. Well, that's great. That's great. Well, I'm off again. <laughs> okay. Because if you were going to lie about this weekend, you certainly would have come up with something a lot smarter than this uncle's funeral thing. <laughs> what, what do you mean by that? I could check on it in a minute. All I'd have to do is call up the local newspaper and ask them to check on their death notices for the last few days. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Everybody knows that. <laughs> okay, well, I got to skedaddle. I got a funeral waiting for me. Don't we all? <laughs> Damn tropical drinks. Gee, <laughs> Coach, it's too bad about the record. You know, we were really pulling for you, Coach. Yeah, and I came so close. <laughs> but don't worry about it, everybody. I still got a personal record I'm very proud of. What's that? Eleven consecutive days without starting a major fire. I think she's scouting your territory. Mm -hmm. Norman, ignore these blather skites. They're just having fun at your expense. She's absolutely right, Normie. The emptiness of their lives causes them to cast aspersions on your own. You can say that again, Coach. No, I can't, Diane. <laughs> Norman, I think that you better give the lady what she wants. She is a client. If you don't come across, she's going to drop you like a bad habit. Norman, has it come to this? Are you going to sell your virtue to the first person who buys you a drink in a bar? If 
you were a woman, I think we'd have a name for you. I kind of like Becky. <laughs> Sammy, I think it's time for a romantic gesture, you know? So, like a little trinket to smooth the water. No, I've done all that stuff before. And I tell you, it's going to take a lot more than music and candlelit dinner to shut her up this time. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, listen. I'm telling you, it's time for you to take a big step. Now, I wouldn't say this ordinarily to anyone in a million years. But you know what might help? Mm. If you actually had physical relations with her. Uh, I, I don't think so, Coach. I, I think we're both going to wait until we're sure how we feel about it. You're a good old-fashioned guy, Sam. <laughs> I have come to pander to the tastes of a tasteless. Oh, you want to head the food committee? Wait a minute. <laughs> we got a chairman for the food committee. Yeah, hey, I like uh, my buffalo sunny side up there, Chief. You referring to my apparel? Oh, hey, uh, no offense there, little beaver, but it is a tad, uh, <laughs> tad out of the mundane, you know? Uh, excuse me, sir, but what is that outfit? This is an Arapaho ceremonial tunic worn by the village elders when they hold council in their hunting lodge. I earned it by letting them pierce my flesh with wild turkey quills. <laughs> uh, this is a J.C. Penny wash and wear, tapered tails. Salesman was a little nasty, but I didn't have to go through anything like that. <laughs>